delayed. Again, while Boeing Starliner continues to be attached to the familiar phrase, delay, the public's hopes are now pinned on an emerging vehicle, the Dream Chaser. Atop ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket, Sierra Space's futuristic space plane was targeted to have a debut launch at the end of this year after a great deal of toing and froing. Yeah, we believe that that date is feasible because the space plane's progress is on track. However, the postponement still continues, raising huge questions about the relaunch date of Vulcan, as well as the timelines of the company's key plans especially since Sierra has planned to build Dream Chaser's crude capsule. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On March 22, 2024, Sierra Space responded to a question referring to the maiden flight of its spacecraft, Dream Chaser's tenacity. When can we expect a launch day? After that, the company gave an unclear answer. We're targeting later this year for launch. We should have more details on the actual launch date once it gets closer. Nevertheless, fast forward to early April, news surfaced that Dream Chaser's launch date may have been pushed to 2025. There is law called Berger's Law saying that if Rocket is predicted to make its debut in quarter four of a calendar year, and that quarter is six or more months away, the launch will be delayed. And the case of Dream Chaser, I'm pretty sure that it's 100% applied again, Based on the updates on the company's X account, it sounded like the vehicle was on track to launch in the late second quarter of 2024. So what is the limiting factor here? In fact, it has already undergone thermal vacuum testing, a crucial step in its journey toward the launch pad at NASA's Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. But this doesn't guarantee that everything goes entirely as planned. On CNBC's Manifest Space podcast hosted by Morgan Brennan on April 5, 2024, Brennan asked if Dream Chaser had a set launch date, Sierra Space's C CEO Tom Weiss responded. We'll say at the end of the, we're closer to the end of the year. So, okay. so the last quarter of the year. Um, if we beat that, that'll be great. I'll be back on to tell you that. But right now, we're, <laughs> we're, we'll, we'll track to that. Weiss went on to further explain the complexities of preparing tenacity for its mission to the International Space Station, including the complexity of the station's schedule and the process of acquiring a re-entry license from the FAA. There's a lot of things that have to play into that. This is this is not a uh, demonstration mission. This has taken up, you know cargo to the International Space Station. Um, and so it, you know, we were dependent on NASA's manifest to the ISS. You know, we're working with the FAA to get a reentry license. So we're working through all that. Even with NASA's internal schedule for missions to the ISS, the Dream Chaser mission to supply cargo to the orbiting laboratory currently has a planning date of September is also not firmly. One source unveiled that, during a recent meeting to summarize planning for space station operations, there were significant inconsistencies in the schedule that Sierra space officials set for NASA. Therefore, likely we have to wait until 2025 to witness Dream Chaser get ready to launch. Then its flight will be subject to the space station schedule, which must coordinate coordinate arriving crew and cargo vehicles from SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Russia. The slowness in developing Dream Chaser's first version would also partly affect the development of its second variant, Reverence, and its crewed variant as well. In addition to potential applications of the Shooting Star cargo module, Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC, remains interested in eventually pursuing a crewed version of Dream Chaser. Back in 2020, Steve Lindsay, a former NASA astronaut and current senior vice president of strategy for SNC Space systems said we've never stopped working on the crude version. There is interest in the crude version, not necessarily NASA, but other customers, he added. Yet the company still doesn't have a specific schedule for developing a crude version. It makes sense because until now, their cargo version has yet to be flown. In 2022, the Colorado-based company Out of the Blue fired the public with the tweet, and then there were two. With the image of the second dream chaser designed in the shape of a running shoe, by then, some comments expressed their excitement about the possibility possibility of the crude versions of Dream Chaser as well as seeing a company with its own astronaut office and training center. However, in contrast to the public's expectation, this version will still be the cargo one when on March 11, 2024, they continued to reveal another picture of Reverence and didn't forget to emphasize that Reverence is the second space plane in our Dream Chaser fleet, which will help carry cargo to the space station. Although Reverence is currently in production along with its Shooting Star cargo module, its progress is considered quietly slow. Compared to the 2022 image, it seems that not much has changed in the 2024 image. The space plane is still in the frame phase or in early production. Sierra Space has made it clear that there are many challenges in developing reverence, from finding ways to increase payload capacity to revolutionizing launch processes. While it would take SpaceX six years only for Dragon V1 and five years for V2, including the Crew Dragon, the estimated time given for tenacity to date is eight years. With the current 
situation, it's not sure that Reverence will be operational in the next few years, not to mention the release of a crude version. Not only Sierra Space, but the Dream Chasers' postponement is also unfortunate news for their partner, ULA. ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket needs to fly sooner to exit the certification phase and begin flying contracted missions for the U.S. Space Force. Following the CERT-1 mission, launching an astrobotic lunar lander on January 8, the rocket's second mission, namely CERT-2, will mark the first time Dream Chaser space plane will fly on top of it. It's safe to say that two missions play a very important role in ULA's survival plan. This allows the engineering team to obtain enough data about the performance of Vulcan to earn certification for national security payloads, particularly the certification from the Space Force. You know, launching military payloads is the primary justification for the existence of Vulcan, and Vulcan is ULA's trump card in today's fiercely competitive market. The company was keeping open the possibility of a spring launch for CERT-2. Among that, 60 days was the expected time to review data from the CERT-1 certification round. If the data looked good from that flight, the plan was to move into preparations for the next launch. According to United Launch Alliance Vice President Gary Wentz, the earliest opportunity to launch the CERT-2 mission was April-ish. That schedule proved optimistic, though. With the good performance in its debut launch, the midsummer target seems feasible given the rocket's readiness level. Vulcan's core stage still lacks the BE-4 engine. The reason the BE-4 is a little bit behind everyone else is because it took a little bit longer to get it developed and finished. It is now. We have wonderful facilities at the BE-4 factory in Huntsville, which was just built and expanded. They literally doubled their factory size to do this, so they have to catch up now to everyone else in building ahead. ULA Chief Executive Tori Bruno explained, in addition to the rocket's readiness, in this case, perhaps more critically, is what will fly on top of it. Due to the uncertainty of Dream Chaser, Vulcan's CERT-2 launch date was later slipped until the fall, and if Dream Chaser isn't ready by September, Bruno said, he has other options lined up to fly on the rocket. I've got a backup plan. I've got two backup plans because it's really important. I actually have three, but I can't tell you what they are because Dream Chaser is going to be there on time and we're going to go to the space station, he said. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.